Welcome back. Just a week from today will be our report card show. The leaders of the Home Builders Association, the Real Estate Association, a little money management, and uh, how to be ready to sell. All a part of that. Keynoter for that show is Tony Bachman. We know that Tony needs to rehearse a week in advance, so he's in the building this morning, and you've been doing a little studying. Share. Good morning, Bill. Yeah, well, you know, it's a, it's a constant endeavor. You know, you're, everything changes from day to day, week to week, and so you just try to kind of stay on top of some of these trends and what's happening. And and uh, like we talked a little bit yesterday, I said that, you know, we'd been gone for a week, and we were out visiting friends in Denver, and, uh, you know, it's it's always kind of interesting when you're having a conversation, you're being introduced to their friends and that sort of thing. And, and uh, you know, and they say, well, he's a realtor, you know, back in South Dakota. Well, all of a sudden there's just a barrage of questions of, you know, what's happening in the market, what's going to happen. Uh, you know, let's talk about interest rates, um, you know, values. Are we going to see anything crash? And and so, you know, the, the conversations that we have on a daily basis – uh, just transmits to, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are having a lot of these same questions. And so, you know, by us doing what we do here on the radio and, you know, having these conversations and then also our interactions with, you know, people that come into open houses or, you know, friends that we talk to, um, you know, I think the number one thing that we can just tell people is, you know, we've, we, yes, we're seeing prices, you know, steadily increase. Uh, maybe they flattened out a little bit, not quite as much as they have been, you know, we've, we've seen a dramatic increase. Uh, but, also that the inventory levels are not there yet. So this trend is going to continue because interest rates are at this point from what the Federal Reserve has said, they're not changing anything for a while. So this is we're on this is going to be the long trip here with, you know, dealing with our current marketplace. I was surprised with the new res- residential numbers that Butch gave us just a quarter hour ago that uh, we are at a 186.5 million this year, we were 126.3 a year ago. Now, I don't know that we have more units, but when I look down to the single family units, 380 a year ago and 542 this year. Yeah. Does that surprise you? So bit? we're up in new construction pending sales, and that was from June now. So we're waiting for the numbers to come out here this week for July. But if I'm just to harken back to June's numbers, you know, the new construction was 36% higher this June from last June. And then we'll even take a look at like the condo townhome that's up 39%. So it's telling you that there's a, it's not just people who are retiring that are looking at uh, townhomes and, and condos. Actually we're seeing it from all spectrums where people like the idea of having an HOA, but yeah, new construction, they can't build them quite quick enough. But I know they kind can't of got, find places to build. Well, them. And they, the, the 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 infrastructure and land, but also you know they kind of got uh, hit real hard with their material costs, and so the material costs kind of put them on their heels for a minute, and then all of a sudden now we're starting to see supply supply chains opening up, and you know, and I don't know that much about you know the builder supply chains. I just know from what I'm talking to my builders what they're saying, and it sounds like things are starting to loosen up a little bit, and prices. They're not back to where they were previous, but at least we're not seeing them tick up. They're actually ticking down just a little bit, which is helpful. And that's a question that you get, a lot of real estate people I talk to get, about can this last? Are we going to yeah. see a big drip, a dip, yeah. whatever you want to call it, yeah. uh, where it gets slower a little bit at a time or a big drop at a time? What's your guess over the next year, five years? Um, you know, I would – if I'm a betting man, which I have been known to bet on things, but in the meantime, I would bet that we're not going to see a big dip, not at all. I mean, we may see things level out a little bit, and when I say level out, we're seeing, you know, like we'd mentioned, you know, we've seen an increment of prices that went up quite a bit in, you know, over the last year. Actually, um, the stat that I had pulled up was prices since January 1st, the median sales price had increased 11.7 percent. So that's double digit increase in people's potential home equity or value, which is pretty substantial. I don't anticipate by the time we get to the end of the year, I don't think that number is going to be, you know, going up another 11%. I I think what we're going to see is things kind of level out just a little bit. Um, July is always kind of one of those months that things kind of slow down a little bit. I mean, in reference to there's, you know, people that are out taking their family vacations, there's softball tournaments, baseball tournaments, you know, all that sort of thing. So we tend to see July as a little bit of a month that traditionally, for many years past has always been a little bit of a, a slower month, you know, but the man's still there. I mean, we're still, we put a house on the market and usually by the end of the week, it's under contract. 
Got to ask you about the uh, government discussing right now, the people that uh, have not made their payments on their homes, and now we're up against that deadline when we got into August. What's that going to do to the housing market in general, particularly where those people may have to find a new place to live? Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. I mean, I, obviously there's some people that have really gotten stung by this in, in a lot of different areas, I mean, in reference to that they just weren't actively employed, and so they were just – they were having to do what they needed to do. Um, but I think the, the, the silver lining, if there's a silver lining here, is the fact that their home values continue to increase. And so even if they weren't making their payments on their homes, they still have enough equity in their home in many, many cases. Uh, so it isn't like that they're going to go bankrupt or have to have a short sale or something like that. Um, so, you know, I think in that respect, if they get put in that position where they feel like they need to sell just to make things work, I many cases, most cases, they should be in pretty good shape. When I have talked with uh, the two presidents and you and all those that will be in the real estate show next week, we've talked uh, a little bit about all that's going on, things that we should know, whether or not people should buy or sell. Uh, and the trend that we've just talked about kind of opens that door a little bit. But if, if you're sitting out there as a person sitting on a home, what should they be doing? Well, the, the consultation we have, the first question I get it from someone who says they're thinking about selling their home is the first question we ask is, that's great. We're going to be able to sell our home. That's not going to be an issue, not going to be a problem. Now, what's the next equation? Where are we going? I mean, are you going to rent? Are you looking at making a lateral move to something with an HOA? Are you looking at downsizing? Or are you just moving from the area, you know, 100%? Because we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I mean, yes, we can put it on the market and sell. We just want to make sure that you're not homeless or trying to figure out, you know, some sort of a, uh, a stop someplace in between where you're doing a short-term rental because that's very stressful too. So uh, anybody who's thinking about that, I mean, that's the mechanism that we talk about, you know. And then there's also, depending on the amount of equity, uh, we know that the homes are going to sell. I mean, at this point, because of the inventory levels, uh, if they have a certain amount of equity, maybe we try and go out and find a home that makes sense for them. They do a bridge loan or a home equity loan. We go and they close on their other house so then they're able to move everything out. Um, or once they know that they get the other house under contract, then they put their house on the market and typically those homes, you know, will sell within 30 to 60 days in, in most cases. So there's ways of doing this and, uh, making it so it's not quite as stressful, but I think the, the gist is like, you know, any of them will say is it's helpful when you have someone working at your side and working for you to kind of navigate these waters because it's fast moving and, uh, it can get a little bit dicey at times, but, uh, you know, we're, that's what we're here to do, and, and we've tried to adapt to this quick moving market. And many of us in the real estate industry, all us realtors, have have you know been trying to do this in with our eyes wide open. And actually, we do a lot of talking amongst ourselves. I mean, I I'm talking to the you know agents in our firm. I'm talking to agents from other firms, and you know we are kind of tra- as a collaborative effort trying to make sure this is a positive experience for our clients. Still, buyers, they are used to being schooled by their parents. Uh, don't offer full price. Don't do anything like that. Today, would those parents, what would they be saying if they found a house they liked and they couldn't get it for 10% off, maybe you have to pay 10% or 20% more? Yeah, and, and I think, you know, pa- parents have their children's best interest at heart, you know, in this process. So I get it. I mean, I understand that. Um, I think what happens is when you find that you have a, a person that's a buyer that goes out and they try to make those uh, offers that are less than list price, and 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 maybe they get it. You know, I'm not saying that there's no homes that sell for less than list price, but many don't. Many sell for list price or a little more. After they lose one or two, you know, in the buying process, all of a sudden now everybody's on board with okay, this is what the market is. You know, so it's it's a it's a learning experience, and and uh, sometimes you get clients who are like, I get it, makes sense. You know, let's go get it, and have other clients who are like. Let's try this, and then after a couple times of trying it, they're like, okay, this makes sense. Now I know what we need to do. Are you still getting a lot of Zoom-type looks at homes? Um, we haven't had as many, you know, as of late. Uh, and Better weather to travel. Yeah, and but if we're working with a client that's from another state or something, we'll do, you know, some of the Zoom, and a lot of times we'll do a little bit like for – Sometimes they're not here for like home inspections, that sort of thing. Thing, so we'll we'll do a Zoom meeting or a FaceTime meeting with the home inspector and with the the buyers, just so that way they don't have to try to, you know, alter their schedule to get back here to be part of that. 
So who's this guy with the cameras? What's what's he doing? So Darius today? Reynolds is on our team. He's a Cracker Jack guy that does a little bit of everything between working with buyers and sellers. And then he's also our video a videographer here when it comes to putting all this uh, out on our social media. And we do our whole team does. I should have combed my hair. Well, it looks good, Bill. Okay. You're, you're doing right. good. So Still have hair. Yeah. So uh, Darius is definitely an asset to our team. And we put on a lot of just we try to put out as many informational videos for people because and uh, you know when one of the things is we've got a lot of people coming from other areas they have no connection to anybody you know in the you know they don't have friends family so they're looking at the social media they're looking at the internet and so we're just trying to present that friendly face saying you know we live in Sioux Falls this is what we do and and uh, we receive phone calls accordingly Tony Bachman Tony Bachman team Keller Williams how they find you uh, we have a Facebook page Tony Bachman group and then we have our website is uh, TonyBachmanGroup.com. And then my cell number is 605-201-5998. See you next Monday. Yeah, look forward to it. Thank you, Bill.